this video we'll be showing how a buck converter actually works. So in our previous video, which we will provide the link to in the description below, we actually discussed as to how one could simulate the buck converter on MATLAB as a simulink, but, in, but we did get a few queries regarding how a buck converter would work. So we thought we would discuss that in this video. So first, firstly, before going on to the actual representation of the buck converter, we would like to break this down into steps. So the first step is to, we'll analyze this circuit here. So we have an input voltage of 100 volts. So the input voltage of 100 volts is, yeah, so we have an input voltage of 100 volts and we have V output, which is measured across the two terminals. And we have a single pole double throw switch, which can connect to two positions in the circuit. So point one or point two. So let's analyze how the output voltage would look when we connected it to each of the two points. So first, when it's connected to point one. So say for instance, it's connected to point one for a time span of DTS. So at this time, if you measure the voltage across V output, it's actually nothing but V input, which is 100 volts. So for, so for the time period DTS, where D is a duty cycle, the output voltage is measured as 100, vo 100 volts, which is V input. Now, when it goes to the second point, part, so when it goes to say, Point two, so the output voltage is actually so the switch is actually not connected to the input voltage terminal, so it actually is zero volts. So as you can see here, the waveform is reduced, like the wave the output voltage it shows zero volts, and that is so this is one time cycle. So this actually ends here. So this is second part, and the next part again is actually one. So if you connect it to one again, you would get V in as the output. So let's move on to see what the output, what this actually means. So you have a DC, so according to Fourier analysis, the DC component of a wave could be found out by integrating the output voltage measured for a particular time interval and dividing it by that time interval. So 1 by Ts is the time interval here and integral from 0 to Ts, V input dt. So now what is the integral of 0 to Ts. So let's see. So you have you have dTs into V in. So that's what you would get as the integral comp integral for the integral part of the um, Fourier analysis. That's what you would get. You get dTs into V in. And when you divide it by Ts again, your V output would be d into v in so that is the equation but that's a relation between output and input for a buck converter where d is the duty cycle so say for instance you needed an output voltage of 50 volts and you had an input voltage of 100 volts what would your duty cycle be so let's see if you guys can get that answer right so leave the comment in the um so leave your answers in the comment section below so yeah, we'll see that. And now coming to the actual representation of the buck converter. So why do, why do we need an, an capacitor or a, an inductor? So see, it is not ideal to have voltage drops, or it's not ideal to have switched voltages. So for this reason, you have a capacitor and inductor connected in the circuit and where the cutoff frequency is lower than the switching frequency. So that is a crisp dis, um, explanation of how a buck converter actually works. So we hope you find it useful and kindly leave any queries or any doubts in the comment section below. And if you like the video, kindly like, if you like the video, kindly like the video below and subscribe to our channel and hope it helped you. Thank you. Also guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, kindly do so and also check out our other videos.